we are going to talk about the Miami Heat and the all-time lineup. So what do we mean by all-time lineup? We're picking a fi starting five, and we are picking three bench players. This can be any array of players that you want, whether it's the best guys that have ever played for the Heat or however you want to do it. And uh, so the floor is yours, Nick. Who all is right. on your top? Who is your um, all-time Miami Heat team? So we're making a roster of a team that's going to go out there. My best eight players. I got five starters. They all got to be cohesive and work together. Then I got to bring off three people off my bench and my rotation. I just want to have an eight-man rotation. It's the playoff time. We need to get a win. I'm not going deep down into my bench. So these are the eight players that I'm rolling with. And these are the players that I'm going to play together. We're going to mix and match them, you know, to make a great team that could go out there and win 82 games out of 82 games. All right. This is how I'm starting off. <laughs> 82 of 82. <laughs> this is how I'm starting off, fellas, ladies and gentlemen. At my point guard position, it's a two-time champion for the Miami Heat. He went to four championships. Um, I'm going to pick him when he played for the Miami Heat in year 12 and 13. The year 12-13 season when he shot 56%, 40% from three-point line, which was amazing. I think that was the Ray Allen effect. 27 points per game, eight boards, seven assists. We're going to go at LeBron, the King James. Did you say Ray Allen effect? You mean the Ray Allen saved his ass I, in the I, finals I, effect? I, uh, hold on. Wait, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. What? What's You're wrong? wrong? You heard me the whole time? Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. My, yeah. Um. Put your headphones. Put your headphones. At my two guard. Getting echo. I'm getting echo now. At my two guard position, it will be Dwayne Wade. Oh eight, oh nine, Dwayne Wade, um, who should have been the MVP. He was robbed. Um, they gave it to LeBron that year, and it should have been Dwayne Wade. He averaged thirty points per game. I'm, I believe he was right on 50%. He actually shot the ball decent for his standard at 32%. 1.2 blocks as a guard. I mean, how can you go with anybody besides that year, Dwayne Wade? At my three, at my three, this is where I get a little different than a, probably a normal thinker because I am Coach Taylor. And Coach Taylor, when he's out there, he's the wide in his lineup. He come up with dynamic, dynamic people to play with each other. So right now at my three, I'm going with Eddie Jones, the 29 year old, the 29 year old Miami Heat, Eddie Jones, because you know he's playing with LeBron. LeBron is orchestrating my team. He's my point guard. I need shooters out there who could defend. Six six long, get in the passing lanes, shoot the ball at 38 to 40 percent from three point line. We're going with Eddie Jones. At my four, we're playing new age basketball. We're stretching it out. We're going with Glenn Rice. It's pretty simple. Lynn Rice, 94-95, shot the ball from three at 41%. Can get his own buckets when I need him to, but he's going to spot up out there. He's going to knock him down. I can count on him. Big dog, Lynn Rice. I mean, he's not big dog, but he's Lynn Rice. Y'all get what I'm saying. At my center position, we're going with um, – Sha nope, I'm lying. We're going with Alonzo Mourning. Yeah, y'all thought Shaquille O'Neal, huh? No, we're going with Alonzo Mourning because LeBron is running this, this unit. So I need a big guy who's going to be my anchor. I don't need nobody I'm throwing the ball down to who's clogging the paint. I need a big guy who could go out there and anchor my defense. And Alonzo Mourning in the 99, 2000, he gave us four blocks per game, basically 21 points per game. He actually shot the free throw percent, shot the free throw at 71%. Shout out to Zoe. Uh, <laughs> and he goes, anchor my defense just like I need him to do. Don't really need the ball. He can still hit the little mid-range jump shot. He don't have to be in the paint the whole time. Coming off my bench, um, at least for the first, I mean, I might have to throw him in as a starter just because he might threaten to beat my ass, um, it will be Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille is coming off the bench 04, 05. He wasn't the same set, even though a lot of people say that, you know, he kind of carried us, but he really didn't. I think it was still D-Wade, even though Wade was in his second year. Shaq gave us 23 points per game, 2.3 blocks, 10, 10 rebounds, 60% from the field goal percent. And he shot the free throw at like 41%, all right, 45, but it's terrible, all the same to me. Um, Shaq is my backup because when I take out LeBron, we're running our offense through Shaq. But we're going to have Lamar Odom also coming off the bench with him because we need a 6'11 guy who can run the point forward. 
He could bring the ball up. Um, he could make plays for us, get us in transition. He could slow it down. He could play off Shaq really well, pass it to him, cut. Big man, you can see everything. You can make all the passes. You can do everything that I need him to do. We're going with LO as our dynamic point forward off the bench. And last but not least, where we're going to go, with, I thought about this one. I just wanted to know who was going to be my third guy. Do I go with a, a heater like Rex Chapman, a guy who steps in Michael Jordan's face and talks shit to him and say, I ain't scared of you. I'm going to light your ass up and did light Michael Jordan up. So I thought about Rex Chapman because I like I can use that shooting off my bench. Give me a Vinny Johnson type, Michael Wade type feeling. And I'm like, no, I gotta go with Tim Hardaway. Cause it's Timmy, you know, Timmy with the crossover. Timmy, you know, got the jump shot. He could still shoot, he could get his points, but he's small. I'm going with Jimmy Butler, who shoots 45% for the Miami Heat this year from three. He could still shoot, he could get his own buckets. Jimmy the butt. The Buckets Butler. Big coffee, big buckets, big shooting. He's he's my third player. And then as my assistant coach will be Udonis Haslam, I need somebody who I'm giving the authorization to to come off the bench and knock a motherfucker out. I don't care. We're paying his fine. Um, we have a little extra money at Carnival Cruise Line. He can pick it up. He can do whatever he wants to go knock a motherfucker out on the court. He's going to be our henchman, but he's doing it as an assistant coach. And then as my head coach, I thought about this. Maybe Van Gundy, just to annoy the hell out of Shaq. But then we're going to fire him and we're going to bring Pat Riley in like they did before because I think Pat Riley can manage all the egos that we're going to have on our team. You know, you got to deal with Shaq. You got to deal with the diva, LeBron. You got to deal with, uh, you got to deal with Wade, even though Wade is a good guy. You got to deal with Odom, who know what Odom is doing at Tootsies at night. Um, you got to get them to practice the next day. So we're going to go with Pat Riley to manage all these egos. Wait, um, Rudy, your time. I, I'll listen to your Miami Heat lineup. Uh, I can't be better than mine. It just can't. <laughs> well, if, if, I mean, if Lamar Odom goes to Vegas, he might end up at the Bunny Ranch rapper, Bunny or Ranch, whatever, seems- whatever you call it in Vegas, where he would, he was apparently supposedly, I don't know, had an overdose and died or, and then was revived or what have you. Yeah, because you definitely don't want the Clippers version of Lamar Odom. No. Um, <laughs> my team um, is uh, starting off at point guard with uh, Tim Hardaway. He was All NBA first team in 1997. He was top shelf as our he's our the best point guard that he's ever had, uh, and um, was a killer in late game situations. Never afraid of the shot. Uh, never afraid to take the shot. And, and I want a guy who's never afraid. And, you know, a lot of guys are afraid to take that shot when it's they're not afraid in the first quarter, but in the fourth quarter with the time running out, their ass is tighten up <laughs> and they don't want that shot. Timmy always wanted that shot. My shooting guard, obviously, is going to be Dwayne Wade, um, who at one point was, whether people like it or not, was the best player in the world. Uh, for about two, a year and a half, to about two years, definitely two years. Um, after winning the finals, he was the best player in the world, better than Kobe, better than LeBron. He was Agreed. the best in the world. And then, and then, unfortunately, uh, after 08, his knees uh, gave out on him, and they, you know he started to have his decline. I mean, he led the league in scoring. Was that in 09? 08, 09. 09. 08, 09, yeah. Um, you know, but then his knees just started getting bad, unfortunately. If, if Dwayne Wade had not had bad knees, Dwayne Wade probably could have, you know, been a 35,000 point score potentially. Um, my small forward is Jimmy Butler. Uh, Jimmy Butler is a dog and he does not need to shoot to win. In fact, he doesn't look to shoot. Tonight was indicative of that against the Mavericks where he just didn't want to shoot. And uh, which was very disappointing because because he didn't shoot is probably why we lost the game. He likes to trust his teammates, which is appreciated, appreciated, but to an extent where I'd rather you take those shots, you know, in the, later in the game. But uh, you know, for a team like this, he's a defensive dog. He is tough as hell. He is a great playmaker, and uh, yeah, he's that dude. And if you get a version of him like the Milwaukee Bucks series, he's probably the best player in the world. Because in that series, he was the best player in the world. LeBron James is my power forward. Even though he can't guard a real power forward. um, Oh, God almighty. 
even though he can't guard a real power forward, is a lot. He can't guard Tim Duncan either. Even though, and I, you know, I, when I say guard, I don't mean a possession. I'm going to repeat that. I don't I, mean I, when someone says someone can guard I, one I, through five. If you, I think LeBron can guard a I point guard all game. Yago. Listen, what I'm saying. Uh, okay, I think LeBron can guard a point guard all game. I think LeBron can guard a shooting guard all game. I think LeBron can guard a small forward all game. I do th- th- this whole concept that he can guard one through five. It is cute. It's sweet. But the reality is, could he guard a possession here and there? Absolutely. Can he guard a center all game? No, he'd foul out. Could he guard a power forward all game in the post? Maybe in today's NBA, he can because they're standing 24 feet from the rim. But in real NBA, where power forwards were powerful and tough and not a bunch of fucking 6'10", 205-pound pussies, yeah, he couldn't guard those guys like on a consistent basis. He would get He would be in foul trouble. But he'd be my power forward. Um, the season he had in uh, 12. 13, was it 13, where he shot 56-plus percent? It's the best, that's the best season he's ever had. People can sit here and say, you know, I've heard people say his he had a season in Cleveland that was better. Hell no. The two seasons he had in Miami, 11-12, 12-13, were the best two seasons of his life. That 13 season, to shoot 56.5% from the field, like that's ridiculous for a, for a, for a small forward. It's ridiculous, and he was dominating games out yeah. of the post. He didn't have like, this new version. I get, I don't know why the Lakers don't oh, use him in the God. post. Quite frankly, I I I don't get it. You want to have him? You want to have him? Um, you know, shooting threes occasionally, fine. But to, the I don't know why at thirty nine they have him outside playing twenty seven feet from the rim. It remember just doesn't his, make a lot of sense to me. Turn of, you remember his turn of face game? It was just yeah, it was just, great. It was. Oh, it was ridiculous. Goodness. It was incredible. Like I, I mean, and you, you know, I'm not. I, you know, I don't like him, you know, personally, but I respect his game. His game's incredible, and I don't know him personally. I don't like him, his persona. <laughs> let's let's fix that because maybe if I knew him personally, I would. I, I don't know because the way he n- n- his narrative publicly with trying to manipulate it all the time, I can't stand that because I don't see any other players do that stuff, and I hate that stuff. Um, the one place he didn't really do that was in Miami. Believe it or not, because he was hated in Miami. And that's the funny thing. The four years in Miami, he was the most despised player in basketball. Would you disagree? No, that's true. I mean, it, it kind of grew. Yeah. It kind of changed after. The first year, he was absolutely yeah. hated. And we ate, and as fans, we ate his hate. And we defended yeah. this guy all it the was. time. And then he goes back to Cleveland, and he's the most loved guy on the planet again. <laughs> Goes to the Lakers, love like crazy. Comes to Miami, he's absolutely no. hated. It's crazy. And my center would be Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo Mourning would not need to touch the ball offensively. He's the one of the greatest defensive centers of all time. Block shots, defend, rebound, all that stuff. And, yeah, I mean, he could get a, a, a clunky-looking hook shot where he's, like, banging like he's punching the air to throw a hook up in the air. Um, but uh, Alonzo Mourning would absolutely be, absolutely be my center. Off my bench, uh, Shaq would be my backup center. And yeah, he'd hate coming off the bench, but for the similar reasons, like he clogs the lane. So he had, if like, there's a reason it, LeBron could not function with no, a guy like Shaq, who is, no, is okay. young Shaq, no, young Shaq, young Shaq, not even the Lakers Shaq, Orlando we'd have Shaq. Cause, we'd have cause huh? game plan. Like, yeah. Or, Orlando Shaq, he was athletic and moved. Lakers Shaq, he was 400 pounds. Like, he was massive. And he just stood in the paint pretty much five, four to five feet from the rim. Um, and if LeBron's game is based on drive and kick and drive to the basket, nowhere to drive to if they have a 400-pound dude in the middle of the lane. Um, my, I have a Chris Bosh who can double up as a small forward, power forward. I mean, when he got to Miami, he was a post player, and he had a great 15-, 17-foot mid-range game. Because of how LeBron plays, Chris Bosh became a three-point shooter. <laughs> Standing in the corner, um, his three-point shot you know, improved exponentially while he was here, which is part of the problem with today's game is all these guys want to shoot threes when they're seven that, feet tall. That, his what? three-point shooting saved us against the Celtics in, in Indiana. Dude, he's, I mean, no, he was huge. I mean, he, he – All of a sudden, he was shooting threes from the corner. I mean, he do my no, house, he, but he, he, was having- he was great. I mean, I think I think Bosch was very underrated, and um, un, un, unfortunately, he had the blood clots because I I I believe that if Chris Bosch does not have those blood clots in his legs, 
Miami beats Cleveland in the playoffs. Miami with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh yes. beats LeBron in that the is. playoffs. Because LeBron was pet LeBron once he left Miami and went he could yeah, not win down sense. here. He could he there was a problem against the Heat. It was a mental thing against the Heat. And if he you know, yeah, we you lost know? to the Raptors, I think it was in you know what else? What? Dwayne Wade got up for LeBron like no other. Of course he did. LeBron got up for Chris. Uh, of course he did. And and I mean, and people, you know, I think LeBron had one or two more wins over Wade in this in head-to-head. But again, they're not head-to-head. He's 6'3", and LeBron's 6'8", 6'9". Like, they're not guarding each other, realistically. Um, but D-Wade, I mean, there was actually a thing on the OGs with uh, a podcast with uh, Udonis Haslam and Mike Miller that Dwayne Wade and LeBron played one-on-one, and Dwayne Wade beat him, you know, when they were in Miami. Dwayne Wade beat him. That And Udonis Haslam said it. He says LeBron's the best player I've ever played with, but one on one, Dwayne Wade beat LeBron, that. which is I can see it. <laughs> I can absolutely see it. You know, so because so, one on one's different. <laughs> you know, it's a different type of game. Now, um, Bosch was uh, Bosch. If he had been healthy, and I, I would have loved. Uh, God, that would have been so nice to see that happen. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. And my final player, I debated on this between three guys. One of them was Ray Allen, but Ray Allen version we got was yeah. not Ray Allen. He won. He saved our ass, but that wasn't Ray Allen. I looked at Duncan Robinson because Duncan Robinson's resurgence this year has been absolutely amazing. Whatever therapist he talked to needs to put a billboard. I saved Duncan Robinson and become the athlete therapist because this guy's confidence went from here to here and back up to here. I mean, and his game has improved incredibly defensively. He's gotten better. His backdoor cuts to the rim. I mean, his passing has improved. I mean, everything about his game has improved. And, he, and he's now a great shooter again. Like, watching him shoot again is just beautiful. But I went with Glenn Rice. G-Money, I, I, I grew up on Glenn Rice. I uh, was my favorite player when I was a kid with, from watching the Heat. You know, I am 46 years old. For, so, Glenn Rice, I remember when Glenn Rice won the national championship with Michigan in 89. Um, you know, so, yeah, I, I, I'm a humongous Glenn Rice fan. People don't really seem to remember how good Glenn Rice was. And, what, and the fact that and, – and this is when we talk about Hall of Fame stuff. When Manu Ginobili's in the Hall of Fame, but Glenn Rice is not, is a disgrace. And I don't think Glenn Rice is a Hall of Famer. And that's why I say stuff like Manu Ginobili in the Hall of Fame is a joke. Dennis Rodman in the Hall of Fame is a joke. Uh, uh, Draymond Green in the Hall of Fame is a joke. Glenn Rice is a better player than all those guys. He had a better career. He was the number one option for most of his career until he went to the Lakers and won a championship playing with Shaq and Kobe. And he was the third option. He averaged like 16, 17 points a game. He was their third leading scorer. But that guy was the number one option for most of his career. And he had a 26.8 per game season with the, with the Hornets. I mean, he had a, he had about five or six, seven straight seasons, averaging 22 or, or, or more a game. I mean, he had a couple of 25, 26s in there. But Glenn Rice was that dude. And the fact that he gets so overlooked when all these other players in today's fluffy NBA – I mean, Glenn Rice in today's NBA, oh, my God, he have a field day. Shooting? My God. Th- th- this is what I talk when I say shooting. When guys can't bang you running through the paint and running across the lane. Uh, Reggie Miller's talked about this many times. When you ran through the, through the lane, you get a forearm by a power forward who's not guarding you. It takes you off your line. It just takes you off. You can't do that anymore. I, I just think Glenn Rice, if, if, if you have guys like that in the Hall of Fame, he should be in the Hall of Fame. It what? It's often y'all make it seem it happen. I say it didn't happen. Talk about it. It's often yeah. as y'all made it seem it happen. It didn't. No, it ha- Reggie Miller said it happened all the time. That's the thing. Reggie Miller played. I mean, I didn't play. I can't speak Reggie, for him. But that's one person. That's but shooters. One person. That's one person. But no, it happened to shooters yes, but all the there's time. more than one shooter on the court now. That's the difference. If, if, okay, everybody, if, if they're running, what I'm saying is when they ran through the lane, people got bowed off the line yeah, all the and time. You can't do that now. You're not allowed to. It's a foul. Cut, split cuts, all type of different actions that's coming off the, the new regular basic. Building. Okay. It, Steph Curry is 6'2, 180 pounds. If Steph Curry got forearm shivered the way these guys got in the, 90s would he be i think he'd be a great shooter i'm not saying he wouldn't be an amazing shooter still would he be the yes. same shooter yes you, you think so so when he's on his back and he can't 
he, remember, he's lighter than a feather. He's skinny as hell. He would like you catch one of these every time through the through the lane. I remember guys back then didn't wear body suits like they do now. I mean, I remember Dwayne Wade was wearing body pads and knee pads and thigh pads. When you played basketball, did you wear freaking thigh yeah. pads and body yeah. rib pads? These guys, you didn't, and that was in college in 2007, yeah. 8, 9, 10. Dwayne Wade was wearing, knee, was wearing a body armor suit under his uniform when he played. It's crazy. And I know guys weren't wearing that shit in the 80s and 90s. But that would be my Steve, team. My coach Steve would be Kirk, Eric Spolster. Steve huh? Kirk could get up shots and, and things like that. I'm not saying they couldn't get up. Okay, I'm not saying they couldn't get up shots. And Steve Kerr wasn't running around in circles. He was spotting up. Different well, player. I you mean, know that. Eventually, they're gonna call a foul. You just wilding out like that. You can't just do it all the time. You can get away with it. You no, know, like it was out there playing. It was World War freaking three. When when the Knicks when the Knicks played the Pacers and and Reggie Miller hit eight points in 15 seconds, did yes. he push off? Yes. Would that be called a foul today? I don't know. Often yes. they might get away with it. Still. Yes. No. Yes. Yes, it would. You can't get away with anything uh-huh. now. Get away with you can't. Things. You can't get away with. And you can't two hand <laughs> shove someone like, in the back you, to where they fall on the like ground. Just go up what? And give a left hand, left left shoulder to somebody. And, get, and he got fucking an offensive one, foul call in him. That one was blatant. The one where he dri- dribbled in and pulled and turned. He didn't. He, he didn't throw it out though. He didn't do his hands. Reggie Miller two hands. No, the one was blatant that yeah. Jimmy Butler just did. Reggie Miller two hands shoved Greg Anthony in yeah. the back. That's why he was wide open. I mean, I was happy because I hated the Knicks, but um, they ended up losing that series anyhow. But that's my team. Coach is Eric Spolstra. I'm the assistant coach. I'm grabbing the water. I'm going to get a paycheck. And um, that's all I got for that team. 